Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Last Week in Halo. The idea of this show is to be your one-stop shop for everything that happens within Halo. I know not everyone can catch up with every bit of news that happens throughout the week. This is going to be a once a week series every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to give you the one-stop shop of everything you need to know about when it comes to Halo news. And for this entire series, I will be leaving timestamps so you guys can hop around the video to find the exact bit of news that you're looking for when it comes to Halo. Now, some of the news that we do cover, I'll be reiterating on videos I've made previously. For more details on the topics we'll talk about in this video, check out those videos linked in the description down below. So the best way for me to know you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure to tap that like button as it really does help out the video and channel. If you want to stay up to date with the Halo news as soon as it happens, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's get right into the content here. So the first bit of news that we're going to cover today is about the MCC. We received a development update back on Friday and this boy got this blog update was massive. Uh, so much information. It gives truly a great amount of information on what to expect for the MCC Season 8 flights. I wanted to cover that for you guys. And Postums did actually go back and edit this post from Friday's video. This will actually be the most accurate representation of the news that we received on Friday evening. So that we're all on the same page, let's go over the information about the Season 8 flight because there is a lot of really great information here. One, we have Halo Reach Firefight update to include Firefight voice previews, more granular body type, and voice. Halo 3 ODSC Firefly update includes per wave customization options, bringing it up closer to Halo Reach's options. And by the way, there is a really, really cool update coming to Halo 3 ODSC's Firefight, which we'll cover a little bit later. This is huge right here. Custom game browser for Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3, as well as Phase 2 implementations, which include updates to filters, search options, and overall improvements to the Create, Browse, and Session Details page. Halo Combat Evolved is seeing a return of its classic HUD in 4K support and toggle settings as well. View model offsets for weapons across all the MCC games. Season 8 customization content, which globally includes nameplates. Here's a big edit that they actually had to come back with. Halo 3 content include new armor, visors, back accessories, weapon and vehicle skins, and more. And the, this is the difference where previously it's, it combined that with Reach with Reach, we're actually getting content that includes new helmets. All new campaign collectibles for Halo 3 campaign. Campaign customization for CE and Halo 3 to allow vehicles and web skins when selecting options. This is a big one for you PC players. Fileshare now available for the PC platform with the ability to set trust levels for saving files. Official, friends, untrusted kind of options and the option to report inappropriate files. Player reporting has been updated to additional areas including scoreboards post-match, accessibility features including improved subtitles, subtitle size, color, shadow, and background color, and all new color blindness options. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary has seen performance improvements in campaign and remastered visuals. A new map for Halo 3 called Icebox has been added, which is a remake of the classic Halo 2 map Turf. Another great addition for your PC players like myself, Steam account linking is now available for your player profile to see your Steam friends in game. And here's an image of Icebox. So if you guys never played Halo Online, this is where this map is coming from. And it is an amazing recreation of Turf. It's pretty true to the original, obviously with a much more kind of like modern Halo style visual to it. But this one actually would probably fit better than like say a map like Edge does within Halo 3. And I played this a lot when Halo Online was like okay to make content on. And this is a very true recreation very excited about this and you guarantee i will be making content about this map as well and here's another image that was shared from them and look look at this this is odst you can tell by this is firefight odst right here and look what they're fighting against the flood yes the Flood is coming into ODST's Firefight, which is incredibly awesome. This is something that fans have wanted for so long, and to have this finally come into the MCC, guys, is crazy excited. I can't wait to make content about this. Now I'm sure the next question you guys are all are asking is, well, when can we get a chance to play this flight? Because I certainly do, because this is going to be a very exciting flight to play. Well, they said in this development update that it's currently in ring one status. And from our previous experience of MCC flighting, 
that depending on how many bugs they come across, ring one is the initial kind of test flight, then they go to ring two, and then ring three, which is the Halo Insiders. Which if you're not signed up as a Halo Insider, go ahead and do that. It also gives you a chance to play Halo Infinite early, which we'll talk about later in this video. Though I would not expect to see the flight come this week as ring one testing generally does take a while. Generally when they kind of get to these formats and when they can actually describe what's gonna be in the next flight, it's probably gonna be about two weeks. So I'd probably expect maybe like September 9th, sometime around there, so we could see the next flight. Now this also could conflict with the next flight of Halo Infinite, which I'm sure is coming around the corner here pretty soon, at least sometime as well during the month of September, which obviously we'll touch a little bit later on this video. But you guarantee as soon as we get new hardcore information about the next flight, guys, I will share it on the channel here. Now on to the next bit of news here, guys. Halo Infinite. This was a huge, huge week for Halo Infinite. We have the Gamescom presentation. We have some PC specs that have been revealed, a development update, as well as a blog update for Gamescom as well and it kind of brought in some issues when it comes to XP gains and some other things that we can actually purchase for the looks like to be the collector's edition of Halo Infinite which looks kind of underwhelming. So let's just jump into all of the Halo Infinite news. First off let's cover up the Halo Inside Infinite update here guys that came for us on August 26th. Now I do have a video detailing everything you need to know about this blog update so if you want to know everything that happened definitely go check out this video. I'm going to summarize and essentially say this blog update that we had was a lot about the bots and their learnings from the tech preview that we had and it seems like that they took a lot of feedback and are going to be doing a lot of changes when it comes to Halo Infinite's next flight which is very interesting and also a lot of this I mean a lot of this was about the bots. The biggest takeaways from me were the updates that they're going to be making to the game for the next flight. A big update and a big change that's going to be happening is with the combat sensor aka what the community generally calls the radar. If you remember within the tech preview you only showed up on the radar if you sprinted shot or used equipment. Well that looks to be changing now. 343 states we've heard all the feedback and we have a new iteration that will be in the next preview which will be more in line with players expectations now when they say more in line with players expectations i think that means more the classic radar coming back for the next flight now big concern were the medals that we had for halo infinite which looked a little underwhelming and it looks like that they are not going to really be able to change a whole lot right now for the next flight but they definitely heard your feedback and looking to talk with the ui team to see how they can improve the current metal situation because i will say that they are a little underwhelming i don't really care about it too much personally but i would like to see that improved and it looks like 343 3 will be doing that the voiceover system is getting a change as well i'm sure you guys heard a lot of chatter between your personal ai and the spartans with the now classic over yonder call out which has kind of become a meme now within the community and essentially what 343 3 has done is kind of buffed the threshold of what creates these call outs and these different dialogues from your personal ai and so you'll probably be hearing less chatter next flight so it'll be a little bit less messy when it comes to what's happening in the game. Weapon drills are being changed to where now you can have much more effective encounters. Like they say, if you're using the Bulldog shotgun, you'll be having much more close range engagements compared to like what we were having in the previous flight. They're also looking to improve the bots because they said that the difference between Spartan bots and ODST bots wasn't really that much and they really wanted to make sure that with Spartan bots, you really feel the difference. So they're taking a lot of player feedback and some data and looking to improve on the bots within Halo Infinite. But the biggest bit of news that came from this development update was from Jerry Hook, the head of design, talking about how it seems like you're gonna have to complete challenges to earn XP within Halo Infinite. Now there seemed to be some confusion within the community. Unishak went on Twitter to clarify, he responded to Ubernick who had a little bit of misunderstanding about it saying, hey Nick, playing and winning matches will be challenges which will help players progress through the battle pass. Even though this means no per match XP at launch, you're still always progressing through challenges and therefore the battle pass. We'll update the blog to clarify. So this bit of news has really brought up a lot of dialogue within the Halo community because you will not be earning XP for just playing the game. You have to complete challenges, which does sound very concerning at first, but I think with a big thing you have to take in consideration is what are those challenges? There are some context needed there to make sure we don't have to go into outrage mode but it certainly is concerning because if all XP is funneled through challenges, it's really going to affect how people play the game. But Unicheck also went on Twitter to kind of give some more context behind this, stating right here on Twitter, 
saying that the tech preview had an issue that caused people to run out of challenges. Our current plans for launch, while not infinite, mean it's extremely difficult to run out daily challenges. I won't say impossible, because there are some grinders out there, but I'd be impressed. And that's coming from Unishak, who this guy, he knows how to grind. He's 152 in Halo 5, and this guy knows how to play some Halo. So I kind of take his word on it when it says hey, you'd be very hard pressed to run out daily challenges. Now, from my experience with the tech preview, it looked like you had about five challenges at a time. I'm guessing that once you complete a challenge, a new one comes up. From my experience from playing the tech preview, most of the challenges were kind of like play this game, get this many kills. You know, rather generic kind of gameplay things where like if you just play the game, you'll be unlocking these challenges anyways. Though there was an issue with the tech preview that there was, since we're only playing Slayer against bots, there were some challenges that came up saying, you know, capture three flags, which obviously you couldn't capture three flags, which held back people from unlocking their challenges. Obviously they addressed this, it's gonna get fixed within the next flight and also at launch. But how do you feel about XP only being earned through challenges? Let me know in the comment section down below. And now what really should be the biggest bit of news, but seems kind of more like secondary news now, is that we finally have a release date for Halo Infinite. A Gamescom presentation gave us some really great information in our first look here at the Season 1 trailer for Halo Infinite's multiplayer, which is very, very exciting, obviously. Of course, my favorite part about the entire thing as it was that the release date was finally announced to be December 8th, which has me incredibly excited about this. I knew once Call of Duty announced their release date, it was only a matter of time when Halo Infinite would announce theirs. And guys, December 8th, mark it on your calendars, request days off of work, call in sick from school, because you're gonna wanna be playing some Halo on December 8th, which is incredibly exciting. But not only with that announcement of the release date, we have some announcements of some special gear that you can pick up for Halo Infinite as well, which is incredibly exciting. One of them being the Elite Version 2 controller in the style of our big favorite green boy, the Master Chief. Which I will say, this controller looks absolutely amazing. Though it does price at $200 as a normal Elite controller, but guys, it's pretty dang awesome, right? If you're gonna get a controller, might as well make it Halo. And it also seems like there's a little bit of extra goodies when you buy the controller. A little bit extra here saying in-game weapon charm for the Xbox Elite controller itself. So another little bit of in-game goodies when it comes to Halo Infinite. But wait, there's more. We have the announcement of the 20th anniversary of Halo console for the Xbox Series X. This console looks absolutely amazing. And plus the controller looks absolutely amazing as well. I love how it's like, it's like subtly Halo and it looks great as a console by itself. But if you look at the console design itself, you can see the Halo-ness coming through on this. And guys, if you're gonna buy an Xbox Series X, might as well make it Halo. And some more Gamescom information, guys. Halo Infinite won the best Microsoft game at Gamescom in 2021, which, I mean, I feel like I was just kind of like given to them just because everyone's so excited about Halo. I really don't feel like the presentation that we had was like jaw-droppingly amazing or something like that, where it would win an award, but it definitely was a solid presentation. We got some good information and people were just so excited about Halo Infinite that it got Microsoft's best game of Gamescom award. Though there was a little bit of a concern coming from the community, especially some other content creators out there that kind of mentioned about how they were missing out on some campaign visuals or at least like some kind of trailer of some sorts. And actually 343's community director Sketch replied to community member in Xperia in a tweet from Hidden Xperia saying he loved what he saw right here, but he said, however, I'll be honest, I was expecting more than just a CGI trailer. Really wanted to see some campaign. Hopefully we do very soon. And Sketch does reply saying, I love that video as well. So I'll be to finally share it in its entirety. Does a great job of setting up season one. And to be fair, we did say last Friday, which was the August development update video that we got some, you know, sad news about the co-op in Ford saying uh, it'd be a, a bit before we could come up for air and show off more campaign. It will happen though. And what Sketch is really saying about that right there is that currently right now they're in like heads down bug fix the heck of Halo Infinite right now. And to create any kind of trailer or gameplay demo or anything like that would take a lot of resources and development from fixing bugs. And honestly, in my opinion, 
I don't really care to see more of the campaign. I think we kind of know what we're going to get. I'm planning to make, I'm working on a video actually right now about everything we know about Halo Infinite's campaign because a lot of people feel like there's not enough knowledge, but we actually, we know a lot. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel when I do upload that video. But I'm sure the big question now is, okay, when can we play Halo Infinite again? We do know there's another flight coming. It will contain BTB and it will be PVP as well. Now we did not get a release date or time frame when it came to the August development update, but from my experience, it seems like it's gonna be probably sometime in mid, mid to early September probably. I have a feeling that uh, 343 will wait till after the Labor Day weekend, which is the weekend of the 3rd of September here in the US, which is a national holiday. A lot of people like to leave and you know spend time with their families go camping or something like that so at the earliest i would expect the flight date to be on september 9th so i could see it get pushed to the 16th and maybe see the mcc flight happen on the 9th and as always if we get more information about this i guarantee i'll make a video about it here on the channel the next bit of halo infinite news guys is that we got the pc specs revealed here on the steam web page itself so this seems to be rather official as well and also i did tweet this out and jerry hook did retweet my tweet saying these are the specs and so this is pretty much going to be what to experience, what kind of build you would need for the PC specs of Halo Infinite. Minimum being an AMD FX 8370 or an Intel i5 4440, 8 gigs of RAM, or for graphics cards, an AMD RX 570, or for NVIDIA cards, a GTX 1050 Ti. And interestingly enough, only 50 gigabytes of space needed. Now, like I mentioned in my previous video, I think this is more campaign related about how much size is needed because I have a feeling the download of the multiplayer will be optional. We also have the recommended specs, which seem to be pretty high with a AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, which is a pretty high CPU, or an Intel i7 9700K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, for graphics cards, you need a Radeon RX 5700 or an NVIDIA RX 2070, which is pretty interesting to see an RX 2070 being recommended. So I have a feeling at some point that we're gonna have ray tracing put into Halo Infinite because you're definitely gonna wanna have that card because they definitely wanna showcase that kind of graphical detail. So that'd be the most recommended. So uh, when we were playing the flight, I didn't see RTX available as an option. Of course, I'm running a 1080 Ti, so it might even give me the option. I have a feeling that might be a post-launch feature as well. Now, this was revealed on Twitter that it looks like the collector's edition of Halo Infinite has been revealed as well. And it looks a little lackluster, to be honest, as it comes with Halo Infinite, a steel book, a $15 gift card to Xbox, an enameled pin, and also some exclusive DLC content we see right here with an armor coating, weapon coatings, and also an emblem as well. And frankly, a lot of people are finding this a little underwhelming when it comes to collector's editions. Now, though, usually we have like the standard edition, then we have a collector's edition, and then we generally have a legendary edition, which has not been announced at all yet. So I don't know if 343 or Microsoft are holding back on that announcement. I would actually bet I'm not getting a legendary edition of Halo Infinite available for us guys, just because of the whole COVID situation has really borked the supply chain of being able to deliver products for us guys. I mean, Microsoft can barely even create these Xbox Series consoles fast enough for people to buy. But it looks like getting these consoles and extra goodies might be a little difficult as it seems like scalpers have already claimed every option possible because you can actually can't buy these new limited edition consoles or controllers right now. And scalpers are already at it once again, ruining the fun for everyone else who loves Halo. I just wish at some point that these game companies and developments would just, you know, make it so then you have to find some way to kind of authenticate from people like just scamming scalpers and just buying every option away from us. Like, I want that console and I'm probably gonna be playing on PC, but like it looks cool or the new Master Chief controller or something like that. And we're having the same issue when it comes to the 3000 series graphics cards for Nvidia, which I really, really want instead of a new console. Uh, but they're just like magical unicorns you just can't get and it's just terrible to see that happen. Now let's go into our next bit of news here guys. There is a big Halo Infinite event coming for us guys and I'm super excited about this. It sounds to be actually like an in-person event. If you check out our boy ahead of HES, Tashi sent out a little bit of a cryptic tweet earlier on the 23rd to saying hashtag HCS and saying it's official. Now, if you guys remember, I did make a video about this back in April when this tweet went out back on April 2nd. So it wasn't April Fools. <laughs> Tashi tweets out here saying, recently locked in date and venue for first Halo Infinite HCS event, assuming it's safe to attend by then, and it's in 2021. 
operated by none other than esports engine. Of course, op that esports engine is ran by the original people who made MLG. And he goes on saying details this summer. See you there. And we had more cryptic tweets coming from HCS here. We're just eyes. Jane, check this out. A new graphic here for HCS, guys. I love competitive Halo. I love watching it. I learned so much for playing Halo by watching these pros play. So I am incredibly excited about this event. If I can make it to this event, you guarantee I'll try. So when will we get these hard details about this event? Well, Tashi also tweets out saying, see you there. And to get out in front of the questions, info on the first HCS event I talked about months ago will be dropping in September. So this is incredibly exciting news, guys. If you guys have never been to a Halo event, I highly, I mean, highly suggest you do. I've been making it to a, every Halo event at least once a year since 2018 when the first event I ever went to was the HCS finals for Halo 5 back in Seattle. And that was an incredible time. If you ever have a chance to make it to an event, guys, I highly suggest you do. If this event's like in the US, or just like in like North America, I'm going to try my damn just to make it. We also had some little bit of tease coming from the competitive organization Sentinels, which is the team org that has the best team, probably one of the best ever created in HCS, originally named Tox with, you know, Snakebite, Lethal, Frosty, as well as Royal 2. Well, they put together a little bit of video saying the wait is almost over. I really wanted to share this with you guys. You making a cake? Oh yeah. When's it coming out? It's gonna be ready when it's ready, man. Okay, uh, I mean, it, it looks good. Does it taste good? I hope so, cause I'm fucking starving. Can I take a pee? Whoa, 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 whoa. Thanks, man. It's, it's not good. done yet. Um, good luck with that. Thank you. So yeah, I wanted to share that little bit of little video for you guys. I thought it was really hilarious and just kind of makes us kind of all feel exactly how Sentinels are feeling. Like it's ready when it's ready, man. But I'm freaking starving and I need Halo Infinite. In our last bit of HCS news, guys, we have an iconic member of the Halo community who made the foundation strong for competitive Halo. Walshy has joined the lifetime achievement in esports for the class of 2021. Obviously, Walshy is a complete legend when it comes to Halo, and to see him get this Lifetime Achievement Award is just something cool. Like, I'm glad he was able to get that, because Walshy, I mean, he's a Halo boy through and through, and it's just great to see uh, greatness being recognized. In our last bit of stories here, guys, we have some cracked Halo stories of what I like to refer to them as. These are stories that have fallen through the cracks, not necessarily anything that have be worth making a video about, but they're really fun and something cool to share with you guys. And uh, my stream is like this one. I've done this on my live streams. If you want to check us out, link in the description down below for our Twitch channel. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. And it looks like we've had some really interesting things like Craig coming to real life. But our first bit of cracked Halo stories here, guys, it looks like Master Chief and his little bundle has come back to the shop for Fortnite as well. So again, Fortnite players get a second time to play with the Halo Infinite Master Chief before Halo players. So that stings a little bit, but if you guys still are out there playing Fortnite, this is your chance to pick up his little bundle. I think it's like 20 bucks on their shop. If you really enjoy it, go ahead and do it. Jeff Grubb posted this tweet about some guy's dislike about the description of Fall 2021 for Halo Infinite. Thought it was misleading, even though it's literally releasing in fall. The poster here says Halo Infinite release date being December 8th caused some discourse on whether or not this is fall because December 8th is literally fall, but not everyone considers December to actually be fall. Overall, referring to release dates in terms of spring or winter is frankly BS, and we need to revert back to just giving release dates in quarters, so like Halo Infinite release date in Q4. This is something that I can intuitively and correctly grasp. Halo Infinite release date in the fall, F off. I mean, I guess Halo players can find something to complain about, you know, get a release date, you still get mad about it. Because if you guys don't know, fall lasts until December 21st every year. So this guy's lack of comprehension of how, you know, the Earth's rotation around the sun works. I mean, I guess, he doesn't like it <laughs> or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> Next, I actually found two maps that were actually planned to be recreations put into Halo 4, but it never actually came true. 
saying today I learned Neros was planned to be included in Halo 4 DLC. Showcasing some concept art right here of what looks to be Neros, but in like the UNSC Halo 4 art style, which I mean, it looks cool, don't get me wrong, but looking at like the original Neros and with that Forerunner architecture, it just, you know, it just looks and feels more Halo than seeing like this UNSC structures. And like, it's a great, you know, version of like, if we're gonna do like a modern version of Neros in the UNSC kind of Halo 4 art style, they did a great job of that. But I just personally would like to see more of the Forerunner aesthetic as it kind of creates that more sci-fi kind of feel to Halo, which honestly kind of felt like either it was over exaggerated and kind of underutilized when it came to Halo 4, if that even kind of makes sense. Another cool little Halo 4 thing I found was that apparently standoff from Halo 3 was going to be DLC for Halo 4 by, created by a certain Infinity, but just never was finished for whatever reason. And you can see right here, here are some early kind of mock-ups of what the map was going to look like in Halo 4 in some capacity. Obviously this is very rudimentary, this was not definitely not going to be the finished product, but kind of cool just to see that they were looking to bring these maps into Halo 4 and you never know, maybe these maps would have helped out with the map pool of Halo 4, give them more of that classic feel, help out with those engagements because Halo 4's map design was radically different from the classic maps that we had throughout the Bungie era of Halo. And so to maybe bring in some more Bungie style maps would probably help out with the gameplay, but ultimately this got cut for content. Now for you Bing users out there farming up your Microsoft points, it looks like you can have a little bit of a Halo theme, saying whether you're on the hunt for fresh intel or you're watching your top secret briefing, make sure you're fully prepared with the new Master Chief theme for Bing. And you have a nice little preview image right here of what it looks like to have the Master Chief banner right here in Bing, which is kind of interesting just to have like this generic picture that we've seen plenty of times of Master Chief with the Halo 4 version of Haven in the background. Um, sure, it's Halo Infinite, why not? Now my favorite story out of these Craig stories here guys on the Halo Reddit, this was posted up saying, Craig made an appearance on WWE tonight, which is obviously like a picture of the guy I took with his phone, but look who's our golden boy looking so sharp in the background. That's right, Craig himself makes an appearance at WWE, which is just absolutely amazing. Like, who would have expected to see like watching WWE and then you just see Craig like, that's just hilarious. And to top it off for you guys, I actually found the guy on Twitter saying, currently watching some Monday Night Raw live, and I got prepared for the occasion. Try and find these signs and tweet about them. Also, big thanks to the good sir near me holding these signs up. And you can see, like, this is him. That's, like, pretty much where Craig was showing. There's a picture of that he gave to a guy to hold to show Craig. <laughs> At WWE, man, that's so cool. Get some other signs as well, because that's definitely part of like the culture at uh, WWE events, the hold up signs. And come on, Craig makes it to an event, man. That's amazing. And the last little bit of crack for these crack stories, guys. We had CM Productions post this up saying, the name is Rex, but you can call me Captain or Sir. By popular demand, Spartan Rex. If you guys have ever watched the Clone Wars series, this will be a huge fan pandering for you guys. This is what a Clone Wars era clone would look like in Spartan armor. So basically, 343, please? Like really, please? This would be absolutely amazing, with, especially with the new Star Wars shows coming out. Have some kind of crossover would be absolutely incredible. This art is amazing. And yeah, that just about does it for all the Halo news for you guys as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this first iteration of last week in Halo, guys. If you want to see the series continue, please make sure to tap that like button. It really does help out the video and channel. It lets me know you want to see some more content like this. And so if you guys want to see more content on the channel guys or miss any content from me recently or new to the channel make sure you check out the playlist right here i have all my halo news and informational videos right there in case you missed anything so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out